Of course, before we get too far into Keyshot, we want to make sure we have something to work on. If you're starting out in ZBrush, what you can do is you can hit the comma key to bring up this live light box section right here. And you also might have a light box button up here. I've gone ahead and removed that. Uh, but I use the comma key for that shortcut. You're going to load up any of these projects. If you don't want to load up an entire project, what you can do is go over here to tool. And then any of these you can double click. If you want to double click, say the demo soldier, I'm going to hit hide over here, hit the comma key again to go ahead and hide Lightbox. Uh, if you've accidentally dragged anything out on your uh, canvas, just go ahead and get, hit Control N to clear your canvas. Drag your demo soldier out, go into edit mode. And then if you open up the subtool over here, you're gonna see we have multiple subtools that make up this object. And then if you wanna send this over to Keyshot, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you go over here to render, external render, turn on Keyshot, and then hit the BPR button. That'll send it over. Now, instead of using the demo soldier, what I'm gonna do is I noticed that AMD sent me some vector files, which is gonna allow me to kind of play around a little bit with this plugin here. So if I go ahead and go over here to this docking menu, if you double click these docking menus in 408P2, you're gonna see they're gonna open and close. You can go ahead and get rid of anything you have over here. You probably have material by default. I have brush by default. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click this little white circle up here, get rid of that. I'm gonna take the Z plugin, grab that white circle, drag it over here to the left. And I'm gonna go all the way down here to text 3D and vector shapes and open that up. Uh, if I wanna load in, if I can just, I can just create text. I can hit new text and I can go ahead and type in test test and I can drag that onto my canvas here. And you see if I go over to subtool, I just have a subtool here with test test. And then if I wanna edit this text, I can just go ahead and type that in. And I can also go down here and change the font. I can click through the fonts here or I can go through here and select a different one. And another really cool thing about this is you can load in SVG files. So what I'm gonna do is click new SVG. I'm gonna go to my Threadripper assets and I'm gonna grab this Threadripper logo. They're gonna see I have yay, which I typed earlier, and the Threadripper logo. They went ahead and just appended that to here. So if I don't want this text anymore, I can just select it, hit delete, and now I'm left with just the logo. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a matte cap gray, which I have down here. By the way, if you need any more information on ZBrush Basics, custom UI, you can just go to my YouTube channel, my Gumroad page, and my CubeBrush page. You can download the videos on my Gumroad and CubeBrush, or just go to my YouTube channel. And we've got a whole bunch of playlists like ZBrush 48, what's new, intro to ZBrush part one and part two and part three. So that'll take you through any of the basics of ZBrush. I'm gonna get really heavy into that, but if that's interesting to you, and of course other things, Keyshot and ZBrush Core, you can go and check that out. And moving right along, let's talk about how to customize this just a little bit more. So you're gonna see right now we have the logo interpenetrating the text, which we're gonna take care of in a minute, but let's go ahead and talk about how to fine tune this a little bit. So if we go over here to Polyframe, you're gonna see we have different polygroups for each of these faces, which is really cool. So we have a back face, a front face, and extrusion here. The extrusion depth is set by this number. So if you wanna make it extrude more, just crank that up. If you wanna make it extrude less, of course, you just drag that down. You can change your resolution over here and by turning the adaptive on and off, what that'll usually do when you're doing text is give you more or less geometry in here to work with, going between an optimized and an unoptimized or more regularly spaced geometry. Because this is a logo, it doesn't seem to be doing too much, but that's okay. I'm gonna add a slight bevel on here. So luckily ZBrush has a built-in bevel function. So I'm gonna crank that up just a little bit. And if that's too much, you can also just click on these here and just type in five and then hit enter. And that'll just give me a nice bevel along here. Now our bevel resolution is set to one. If I want to, I can move that up to say five again. What that's gonna do is give me five edge loops contained within that bevel. And then once I have that dialed in, curvature is gonna be ungrayed. And then I can either curve that out and that'll kind of make it kind of bubble, bubbly along that edge, or you can curve it in and that'll give it a more scalloped look. So if you go to the side here, you can see it's just beveling inwards like that. But I don't think we need to get that fancy. So I'm gonna take this bevel back down to one and that's gonna gray out my curvature. And now we just have a simple bevel along that line. So let's clean this up just a little bit. The first thing that's obvious you're gonna see is that the logo is interpenetrating the text. Now, if you zoom in here, you're gonna see that the text actually does continue through here. So the good news is we can separate this logo from the text. Another thing you're gonna see is here, how there's a little bit of extraneous blobs in here. We can clean that up too, it'll be pretty simple. So what we're gonna do to separate this logo out and get rid of any extraneous blobs, what we're gonna do is hold down Control Shift, grab a little section of that logo, then do Control Shift A. What that's gonna do if you go down here to the visibility menu, the shortcut for grow all is control shift A. That basically took every vert that is welded to the vert that we had visible and grown it out to one solid object. So now that we have this isolated out through visibility, what I can do is go down here to the subtool split menu. I'm just gonna do a split hidden. What that's gonna do is give me my logo as one mesh and separate everything out into another mesh. If I click the solo button over here, I can go into solo and you're gonna see we have the letters here and the letters down here, and then we have the extraneous little blobs. If you want to get rid of the extraneous little blobs or separate them out, which you can do, 
well, there's a couple different things. You can go down here to the polygroup menu and you can do auto groups and that's going to group every vert weld thing into its own polygroup. Uh, but I do want to try and maintain these polygroups within these letters. So what I'm going to do instead is hold down control shift. I'm going to grab a little section of just these letters here, do control shift A and then control shift drag on my canvas to invert that visibility selection. And then I can do control shift drag and then hold down alt and then control shift drag, hold down alt, control shift drag, hold down alt. Control shift drag again to invert all that, then to control shift A again. Again, we're growing visibility on all of those. Now what I'm going to do, I'm using my custom menu here. If you want this custom menu, go to my Gumroad or QBrush page and you can download it for free. Uh, but instead of going to the split menu down here, I can just go to my custom menu here and do split hidden one more time. And now you're going to see what I'm left with on this last polygroup right here, or this last subtool right here, is the extraneous stuff. If I want to keep that around, for aesthetics, I can. If I don't want it, I can just select it and hit delete. So if we go out of solo mode by clicking that button, you're going to see we have our logo and our text. If you hold down Alt in ZBrush and tap on these things, you can instead of going through here and select them in your subtool menu, you can just Alt tap them and select the subtools that way. So if I Alt tap the logo up here, I can hit W, and now I've got my gizmo mode, which by default when you hit W, you go into move scale and rotate, which with the gizmo, all you got to do is hit W and you can do all three. So if I want, I can move this logo back a little bit, and I can also scale it in or out. And that kind of moving you can do in Keyshot, but while you're in ZBrush and setting it up, you might as well just do it in ZBrush. Um, another thing you can do is we can go down here to the text, and if you want, you can even separa separate out this Ryzen from Threadripper. So I'm going to hold down Control Shift, grab all of this Ryzen, and then do another split hidden, and now I've got Ryzen and Threadripper. You're going to see down here there's a little bit of a hiccup. In the A here, the hole wasn't actually popped out. Luckily, we do have live booleans that we can use to fix this, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to learn a lot more about ZBrush than I thought, but this is kind of fun. So I'm going to take this A right here, hold on, Control shift do Control shift a and you're going to see there's no hole in that A. If I do Control shift drag to invert that, you're going to see, oh, there's the hole right there. So all I really need to do is take this, I guess you could call it an A hole, and use that as a boolean to go ahead and punch the hole through the A. I also just noticed another small hiccup right here. This P is a little bit more rounded out than this one. So you know what, let's have a little bit more fun. Uh, before I fix that, I'm gonna hold down Control Shift, drag out a visibility selection, which you can see up here is select rectangle. And I'm gonna hold down Alt, and I'm gonna go to Geometry, Modify Topology, and Delete Hidden. Now, luckily, I have a P sitting right here, so all I got to do is hold that control, mask that P, control tap to invert that mask, hit W to go into my gizmo mode, hold down control, and just drag out a copy of that good P. I'm going to control drag to get rid of that mask, and let's go ahead and punch a hole through that A like we were talking about before. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to separate this Threadripper text from that hole. So again, I'm going to do is hold down control shift, grab all of these pieces here, do control shift A, control shift drag to isolate that or to invert that and then control shift, hold down alt, hold down alt. And now I want to split this from this. And just, I'm just holding down control shift and dragging to invert those selections, the visibility on those. So now I can do is go ahead and go and split hidden again. And now I've got this punch out shape from my text here. So I'm going to take this punch out shape and in order to get this to punch all the way through, what I'm going to hold, what I'm going to do is hit W. I'm going to hold down alt and I'm going to click this little location icon to say, go to unmatched mesh center. And I'm just going to scale this out so I know it's going to punch all the way through. So now let's talk a little bit about live booleans really quickly. If you want to know more about live booleans, again, go to my YouTube channel, go to the 4R8 What's New. That'll take you all the way through all the cool stuff you can do with live booleans. But for now, what we can do is we can create a start group for the logo, create a start group for Ryzen, create a start group for Threadripper. I'm going to move this Threadripper above that hole, punch out, using this move up. Oops, I'm going to select... Threadripper, move that up, and now I've got this whole punch out icon. What these start groups are going to do is allow these to stay separate meshes when I do my Boolean operation. So I've got my Threadripper here, I've got my hole here, I'm going to do a subtractive operation. You're going to see nothing really happens because I need to go up here to this live Boolean and turn that on. If I turn off polyframe, you're going to see what that does is go ahead and punch that hole right through the text. Now it's not real, it's just a preview. So what I can do is I can take this here, I can hit W and you're going to see if I move that around, it's just going to be punching a hole wherever I move this thing um, within that start group, which is the Threadripper text. But since that's just what I want to do, I just want to punch that out. I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And with live Boolean turned on, I'm going to go down here to my subtool menu, Boolean. We don't have dynamic subdivisions turned on, but if you wanted to, what you could do is if you wanted a little bit smoother texture, you're going to see it's kind of faceted around here. You could uh, up the resolution, but you can also turn on dynamic subdivisions. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to hold down Alt and tap on this Ryzen logo here. We'll turn on Polyframe as well. 
And just for now, we're gonna turn off live Boolean temporarily. So again, you're gonna see we have our bevel polygroup, our extrusion polygroup, and our front and back faces here. So what you do is you can turn on dynamic subdivisions, which again, is just going to give you a preview of what it would look like if you smoothed this out. So if I turn off polyframe, you're gonna see what that result is gonna give you. Uh, you can go down here to the crease menu and you can do crease PG, which is gonna crease all of your polygroups and allow you to have a nice smooth surface throughout. You can also go down to the crease menu and change your crease tolerance down to like say 40 and hit crease and that'll go ahead and crease these corners as well. So you can kind of play with that crease tolerance here. And if you crease tolerance, if you go too low with that, it's gonna start creasing some of these angles. So you gotta kind of watch that. Looks like 33 does a pretty good job. Um, now there's some areas in here you might wanna crease more or crease all the way through. What you can do is go into your Z modeler brush, BZM, hover over an edge and do crease edge loop complete or edge loop partial. And now we can just go through here and increase any of these problem areas. I'll go ahead and fix the really obvious ones here. It looks like there's no more. So just really those areas here, what I did, it was just click on that edge and then it creased all the way through until I'm at a T-junction here. And that kind of made this a little bit nicer. Now if I turn off polyframe, you're gonna see with that dynamic turned on, we're getting a lot smoother result. Of course, you can hit Shift D to turn dynamic off and then D to turn it back on. You can say yes, uh, or you can just click this button right here. Now, if you want it even smoother, what you can do is go up here to your smooth subdivision level and crank that up to say three, and it's gonna get an even smoother result. So let's go ahead and repeat that down here with Threadripper. So again, we're gonna do crease PG, and that's going to crease all of our polygroups. So if we turn dynamic on, uh, we're getting nice creases along each one of those polygroups. So if we turn on polyframe, you're gonna see what that's doing. And then of course we'll drop our crease tolerance down to like say 33, hit crease, and that go ahead, goes ahead and creases our corners for us. We'll look for any problem areas here with our creasing, and everything looks pretty good except for this one corner here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to crease an edge, hold down Alt, and I'm gonna uncrease that edge. Good enough, so we're getting a much smoother result. Again, we're gonna take smooth subdivision level, turn that up to three to get an even smoother result. And then on this A, we'll do the exact same thing. Crease polygroup, and you don't have to crease polygroup in this particular case because when you do our crease tolerance, it's gonna do that for us. We'll hit D, change that smooth subdivision level to three. And now when we turn our live Boolean back on and turn polyframe off, what you're gonna see is we're getting a smoother result on the cutout edges as well as a smoother result for the logo itself. For this logo here, I'm not gonna bother doing anything other than maybe doing a crease PG, turning on my dynamic, I'll leave the smooth subdivision at two. I don't think it needs to be super high res. Now, the cool thing about this is, not only am I gonna get a better result when I do my Boolean operation, but if you were to send this over right now to Keyshot, it would build in these subdivisions to give you that smooth result. So you don't have to even apply these as actual subdivision levels before you go into Keyshot. Keyshot will just handle those subdivision levels, turning them from dynamic in ZBrush, which again, you can turn that off and on with Shift D and D, to real subdivisions in Keyshot. However, because we're gonna Boolean out this A, it is going to end up being actual subdivision. So uh, again, we've got our Threadripper text here, we've got our cut through here. And you know what, I just noticed, <laughs> let's, let's, yeah, it's, it's too much fun to do, to, to do this stuff. I'm gonna turn off my Live Boolean, we're gonna fix this really quick. You're gonna see when we have these bevels here and then we do this one, if we turn Live Boolean on, you're gonna see it's just a sharp cut. So if you wanna introduce a Boolean here, all you'll need to do is, I'm gonna hover over this edge, I'm gonna to go to Insert Single Edge Loop with my Z Modeler brush, I'm gonna do Shift D to turn off dynamic subdivisions. Now you're gonna see what that does is just add and insert a, an edge loop right along that object. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, I'll add an edge loop here, I'm gonna add another edge loop here, and then I'm gonna hover over this edge, I'm gonna to go to Poly Group, Poly Loop, I'm gonna tap that and then tap Alt to give me, to cycle through poly groups and just give me a new one. Then I'm gonna hover over this face here. I'm gonna do Q mesh, poly group all. And then as I'm Q meshing this out, I'm gonna hold down shift and that's just going to kind of inflate along that surface normal. So what that's doing is giving me a slight bevel around there. Now, if I wanna increase or decrease that, I can just hold down shift as I Q mesh again. If I don't hold down shift, it's gonna snap back. But if I hold down shift, it's just gonna push along that surface normal so I can make that bigger or smaller. Now, in order to see the effect that that's having, what I'm gonna to need to do is push this object back in. So I'm gonna hit D. Well, first what I'm gonna do, hover over this edge. We're gonna go ahead and do a crease, edge loop complete. And we'll just go ahead and crease both of those. So now when we hit D, those will be nice and creased. And then when we hit live Boolean, and turn off polyframe, as I move this Boolean back, you're gonna see it's going to introduce a bevel where I've inflated that. So I'll go ahead and just push that back. So now we get a bevel along there. And because this is a live Boolean, if I turn up polyframe here, we can go through here and just use our modeling tools and modify these as needed. So you're gonna see, if I wanna pull these out, I can just 
on the fly, pull those corners out and kind of get a better result. I can also go through here and I can scale this in a little bit overall and maybe scale it down just a bit. There we go. So we punched in a hole with beveling and now I think we're finally ready to go. Uh, remember again, we have three start groups, one, two, and three start groups. This start group has a Boolean operation. And when we go here to the Boolean, we have used dynamic subdivision. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that on hit make boolean mesh and finally if we go up here we're going to see we got our u mesh that's our union mesh we're going to select that and now we have three sub tools here this one has been nicely beveled out and if you click on polyframe here you're going to see we have all access to all the original polygroups here as well as our dynamic subdivisions have been converted to actual geometry now if you don't want to do that i think what you can do sometimes usually is go down here to geometry hit reconstruct subdivisions and occasionally that'll reconstruct back through it looks like when i did my boolean operation it booleaned with something else so i'm not going to be able to do that but that's okay all i really needed was this nice smooth geometry. So again, we've got our logo in the background, we've got our text here, and we've got our text down here. Now when I send this to Keyshot by default, when I go up here to render, turn on Keyshot, hit BPR, it's gonna send all of that over to Keyshot. 